Okay, in this video, we're going to go over the installation, licensing, and an example of using the Asta UML editor. So, I have a, a link here. You should follow it. Oh, it doesn't really show it, does it? Well, that's the link right there. There's also a link in the document. Um, so, either way. And this takes us to the licensing page. So on this page, you're going to request a license of the tool. Now, one thing to notice is that Asta has many different, well, several different uh, editing tools, and we want to use Asta UML specifically. So it's a UML editing tool, and we the license you receive won't work with the other tools. So you have to make sure you're using the UML tool. So anyway, all you have to do is put in your um, address, uh, your email address, and I have to use, you must use your utd.edu address um, to qualify for a free license. And then the name of your school, first and last name, yes, yes, and then hit apply. And after a minute or so, you will receive a document. Um, while you're waiting, we can go and download the tool. So uh, on this response page, we can download a style UML. There's other ways of getting to it, um, but this is the one uh, I'm showing you. And then um, here we have the different uh, packages that the um that the, the they support and there's mac os linux and so but anyway most of you will be on windows so you want to download the windows tool and and then just just run it And it takes you through an agreement. Now, I've already installed it. I don't want to go through it again. So install it on your PC. Yes. Okay, so. And then it shows up. And um, uh, right there, style UML. Okay, my license just showed up. And this is like the fourth license I've requested in the last couple of weeks. So it just, they just seem to keep sending them to you. Here is your student license. It's in a zip file. Download it. Done. And then um, it's in the zip archive. So there. And then I, I don't want to have, I'm not showing my desktop icons uh, for reasons. And uh, so I'm just going to put it on my desktop. Well, I'm not showing my icons, am I not? Oh, whatever. And um, it's, I already have it here someplace, right? Oh, whatever. So I'm going to copy it there. Style license XML. All right. And so then, um, because I already have it installed, I'm not going to get prompt for the license. So it's not a perfect example for you to follow, but it's close enough. So open the star and then license. So it'll, when your unlicensed download, when you first install, it's going to open this license management. And so you just go set license key, and then select the XML document. Now, make, make sure you're not going to select the zip file that the XML was packaged in. That won't work. You have to open the zip file, pull out the XML file, and then you can use that. Then you can install the XML file. 
All right, so now it's installed. So that was really it. Um, and we have this editor installed on our desktop. It's licensed and it's uh, ready to go. So um, close some of this. All right, so now this part, we're going to go over how to um, set up uh, a project and then build a activity diagram and, and then mess with it a little bit. So we're just going to spend five minutes or so um, working a little bit with the X, uh, with this style editor. And so um, you want to start a new project. So here's, we have a new project. It doesn't have a title yet, so you need to, um, I would just go ahead and save it first. And so save it to uh, desktop and, you know, um, you know, file name. So in the, um, in the documentation, in the project description, um, there's a specific format that I want these stop projects to follow so that they have your team number and your um, net ID. Net ID is very important. So it's something like team. Now I'm not going to put it down because then people are going to, people are going to copy it. And I, and I, I want you to specifically use the, um, the format in the document. So I'm just going to delete me because I don't want this thing around. All right, so you've created a project. Again, you need to name the project after the template in the project description document, Word document. Okay, so we have a new project, but it's empty. And so we're going to, we're going to add a diagram. So there's a number of ways of doing this. Um, you could right click and then add activity diagram, or you can go to diagram and add activity diagram. It doesn't really matter which. So now we have a diagram going here. And because I'm asking you to use the uh, UML swib lanes, because I'm looking for a scenario or um, a process that um, involves the interaction of the user and the system in some way, we need two swim lanes, so I'm going to start the first swim lane. So you click, then drop, and it'll be the user or customer or whatever the role is. And we'll need a second for the system. Okay, off to a good start. Here we are. Now we need to add activities or task um, into this to describe our process. So I'm just going to use the example of the um, uh, register um, new customer for an e-com site that we talked about several times. And so I have, so we're going to start a new process. So we need the uh, start node or the initial node. And then we need to lay down uh, those um, tasks or steps. And then now, and this notice that uh, in a STA, they're calling these um, actions. So action, lay down an action, and something like, you know, user, oh no, so no, we're in the perspective of the user. So to put user in that task would be kind of redundant. Uh, presses, um, register, R-E-G-I-S-T-R, new uh, customer. Something like that. All right, so that's there we go. Now, and in terms of aesthetics, it's a little. It might be a little bit wide, especially if you have a long sentence. So I'm just demonstrating that you can go in and re resize uh, these, so they take up a little less space. Well, on multiple lines, so long sentences can be broken into multiple lines to keep your diagram from getting very, very wide. Um. Anyway, so then we need to attach a transition from the start to the first step, uh, first um, action. And then here is what's called a control flow. And you click, drag, and click. And there we have um, our first step. And you can repeat that. Another option, so we now we need to place a... Um, a you know a response of the user you know, system's response to the user 
um, selecting this action. Um, I could drag, you know, I could do this click, click for a new action, but I could just double click on the screen. I think that's nicer. Um, presents the uh, so it presents, you know, it presents on the user's device, their phone or what have you, the customer registration screen. Oops. Something like that. It's good. And then now, again, we need a transition. And uh, we could click and then drag. But if you just, if, if nothing is selected, you, if you, uh, hover over the uh, action, this arrow shows up, and then you can just grab that and show that, go that way. All right, so the, u so the user has presented this um, registration screen, and so what is the, how does, the, now it's in the uh, user's turn. And so, um, um, Could be a little more. I'm just being very terse here. Creates the customer registration information, a little more detail, but um, this will do for an example. And again, we need a we need a transition, and there we go. So they complete the uh, information and they submit it. That's assumed they're going to submit it, and then we need the user's act, uh, the system's act uh, response action. So. And then, uh, so this is a choice, verify customer information. So that in our, there's two possible outcomes to ver verifying the information the customer provided. Either the information is valid or it has a problem, right? So we have a choice. We want to indicate a choice between two possible, you know, paths out of this action, out of this step. So we need two icons, two actions, and notify, so this is this will be the invalid. Now, if you want to, you know, you want to break the line here, if, you know, instead of re, um, you know, resizing uh, the icons after you enter the information, you can just hit shift, enter and then starts another line. So notify user of invalid invalid entries. And so and see it's not it's not giving me the arrow because this is selected. So if I click off the arrow show up. And this will be the next step. Save Save customer information. And we'll need an arrow for that. And then this goes back to the user to, to complete the information correctly in this case. So the only thing missing here is that because there's two exits from this, this uh, action or this decision, we need to label these arrows, these transitions, with the condition that causes the, um, you know, the control flow, the process to take this step or to take that step. So I select an arrow. And then down here, we have this. So, I want, you know, this, this is a little area dialog, if you will, that allows us to, you know, here you could create the information here. You could have entered the information here if you wish. Um, but at any rate, so now we need, we want to label this transition and we said, you know, this is invalid, um, or in, yeah, invalid information. Uh, 
Now you can you can do this thing as well. You can do multiple lines there as well, but um, I don't want to. Okay, invalid information, and then drag it off to the side so we can see it. And you might think, oh, this is getting a little crowded. So you know you can drag these um, the partitions between the swim lanes. Then here we have valid information or information valid. Okay. And uh, and then so that's it. I mean, you add, you know, whatever comes next. And remember, transitions could go back and forth between the system and the user. Um, I mean, I so and at the end, I'm not, not saying this should be the end of this process, but for the sake of an example, you know, you need an end transition. Okay. And then notice I have everything nice and neat. You know, it's not all over the place. So that would complete this, you know, version of this um, of the, of this given process. So then the question is, well, each of the team members is supposed to, you know, submit a different version, if you will, of the same process. So how can, you know, you might ask, well, how can we indicate and you know, change one version of the process to another? Um, you're not to change, you know, for a given team, you're not to change the process. The process should be the same, maybe, you know, the same um, steps, the same transitions, the same choices. So you could do a couple of different things. You could uh, change the text if you want. So verify customer information uh, is correct. And then maybe you want to break that into two lines and then, you know, click off. And so that, that would be a difference, right? Or you could go in and select some of these and change the fill color. Now, this I think this is not a bad choice because it really is obvious. So one version of the um, one members, one team members version would use you know these colors, and another versions, another version, uh, another members version would you know use that color. And there again, you know, it'd be something really obvious that they, um, you know, that different that the that one project, or so that each member's project is somehow changed, indicating to me that each team member was um, worked with the editor uh, rather than just you know having one person build the diagram and submitting the identical diagram you know three or four times, um, which it, anyway. So that's my take. So, uh, you know, that's it. So you're going to save that document, uh, this a style file, and you need to rename it to include your team number and your net ID as shown in the project description. And um, we're done. You're done.